To thee we come, O Lord our God. participate in this holy sacrifice and now I ask that you please make an examination of your conscience <clears throat> for your penance for the next three nights Besides offering your morning and evening prayers, I ask that you take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church on this 25th Sunday in the ordinary, to reread it in privacy, and to reflect upon the importance of the message that is contained within the Word of God. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Yet I, like a trusting lamb, led to slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. But you, O Lord of hosts, O just judge, searcher of mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance. You take on them, for to you I have trusted my thoughts. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to who God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, 
receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Heavenly Father, your Son has taught us that service is the way to your kingdom and that suffering is the prelude to glory. May we learn from his example to place the needs of others before our own. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, O merciful Father, as we gather this day, we offer prayer for the repose of the souls of our brother and sister in blessed memory, for Joseph Keslowski and Irene Ferrick, and we ask that you would receive them into your eternal care as we ask for your grace and blessing accept them into your heavenly kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care we ask this through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit and our one god forever and ever Please be seated, and Cheryl, will you please proclaim the word? The first reading is a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, let us be set the just one because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his works be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the land of his foes. With revealment and torture, let us put the just one to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto you. Share. Yes. The second reading is a reading from the letter of James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without incon incons inconsistency sorry, or insincerity. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make more war within your members? You covet, but do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask, but do not receive, because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey toward through Galilee. But he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to question him. They came to Calphurnium, and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all, and servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around it, he said to them, Whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered on this, the 25th Sunday in the ordinary. Do you know, Holy Scripture, the Word of God is not only to give unto us eternal spiritual statements of faith, but it is also to give unto us moral teachings. If we look at the readings as prescribed by the church, we take for today for the first reading, which is from the Apocrypha, from the Book of Wisdom. We see, as I have said in the past, 
that the old is revealed in the new and the new is contained in the old. And for the witnesses of those who were influential in writing the books of the Old Testament as well as the Apocrypha, we see the truth that is contained that binds all scripture together. We see in the first book of wisdom a precursor of the sufferings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we read, we see that people would eventually deny the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we also read, as we did last week, from the letter of James. And it is important for, for us to rely upon Holy Scripture to give each and every single one of us direction. And so today, as we read from the letter of St. James, we see the moral dilemmas of people that are not necessarily grounded in the Word of God. We read from the letter of James of how not to live, and we see some of the reasoning that takes place within individuals who, because of selfishness and greed, actually from themselves create the wars that we see. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, we read from the Gospel that Jesus says that the defilement does not take place necessarily outside of ourselves, but within our own inner nature. And so, the Gospel of Jesus Christ the teachings of our Lord and Savior says to each of us that we need to examine ourselves and see the motives of the chaos and the confusion and the greed and the selfishness that people possess within themselves. We see this also in today's Gospel that Jesus, speaking about his passion, was somehow put onto the back burner. And so we read that as Jesus went to his home in California, he said, what were you arguing about? They remained silent, as scripture tells us. But they were discussing among themselves who was the greatest. We find this evident with the mother of James and John, who were the sons of their father, Zebedee, where the mother asks Jesus, when you come to your fullest, can you tell me that one of my sons will be on your right and one of your, my sons will be on your left? And Jesus says to her, you don't know what you're asking for. As we find out later on that James did suffer martyrdom, while John the Beloved, as according to tradition, died of a natural death. I think one of the greatest examples that we have, and we can refer back to Holy Scripture, is where Jesus, who was the head of the Passover, at the Last Supper, what did he do? He got up, he put a towel around himself, and he started to wash the feet of his apostles. And he says, you know what I've done for you, you should do for each other. Jesus became selfless. And he, came, and he said at one time, I have not come 
to be served, but rather to serve. And that is what brings distinction upon those who follow our Lord. That they place themselves not to the top, but rather in the teachings of their <coughs> rabbi, their teacher. And Jesus says, Whosoever wishes to be first, he shall be last and the servant of all. And to bring this to its fullest, Jesus uses a child. And he says, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. There are, in the innocency of a child, a willingness to try to live to a higher standard. And unfortunately, for many, many times, it is the reflection of the parent that actually causes a child to become self, selfish, and the beginning of the human factors that we see as being negative. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, may we remember that Jesus told us that we need to deny ourselves and we need to pick up the cross and follow him. He is giving us a directive. And in following Christ, we begin to learn the lessons of being selfless and not selfish. And so every time we gather and we hear the word of God, which is a sacrament in our church, it is the Word of God that helps us to be transformed into the new man, as Paul has written in many of his letters. May we, as Jesus said, let those who have ears hear. And may we, on our journey and transfiguration and transformation, become more and more as he would want us to be. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I be believing one on God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory set us to the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not have an end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. <coughs> and also with you. Let us pray. He indeed died for all, 
so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Please be seated. Accept these gifts which we offer to you in faith and trust. May the offering unite us with your Son's offering on the cross, which brings us eternal life. As you have granted unto our brother Joseph and unto our sister Irene, we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is through his teaching and ministry that Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and to all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, may we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world yet to come. And so, therefore, we join this day with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, 
and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is she, comes to the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church that you be guided in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this day, may we pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. May we pray this day for world peace, May we give thanks for the blessings of all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad. May we offer our humble and sincere prayer for all abused and neglected children, for all abused and neglected animals, and for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. And Father, may we also offer prayer for all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you this sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries, in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and lifting his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. in like manner after supper. Taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, 
which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch, Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered to a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we, who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar, may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, Joseph Kisilowski and Irene Ferrier, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, delight, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives pattern after their divine master merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, We may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, 
your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in all of us, living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. For those of you who will not be able to receive the Blessed Eucharist sacramentally, May we now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I have grace to receive you. 
For with, if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Almighty God, for the demonstration of your love in Christ's atoning death. And in this Eucharist we have received, teach us to be content in all circumstances and to rejoice in all trials because our, our hope in you. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. Receive the prayers that we offer you this day for our brother Joseph and our sister Irene, for whom we honor this day, that they be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you, through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the light, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Spirit, 
and for the repose of the souls of our late departed brother and sister in blessed memory, for Joseph Kozlowski, and for Irene Ferry, and for all our relatives and friends, for the repose of their souls. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they not all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.